Hello. Good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hello. Welcome to the class. We are going to wait just a few minutes, just in the meantime that the other people join. Hello. Hello, good night. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Eh, una pregunta eh, respecto a la, la, la plataforma. Ajá. Eh, en la. ¿qué? ¿Qué le digo? En la sección 2, en la número. 2.5. Uh -huh. Tengo una tengo una tengo una duda. Es my name neighbor ask me how many children you do have. En la 2.5 dice. Ajá, la 2.5. ¿Cuál número de esa? Perdón. ¿Cuál pregunta es? En la sección 2. Vaya, la 2.5, pero quisiera saber cuál de todas las preguntas de la 2.5. Ah, ok, ok. Es la, es la, par, es la parte número 2. Donde hay que cumplir. Ah, tarea 9, dice. Ajá. Hasta abajo está. Dice, eh, convert the direct W question o indirect speed sighting report speak. Vamos a utilizar my network. Ask me. Entonces, sí. eh, lo que pasa es que esa clase creo que no, no la tuve completa, entonces he quedado con dudas, se me ha olvidado. ¿Cómo es la, cómo es la estructura? Vaya, para la primera, por ejemplo, tendría que ser algo así como My neighbor asked me how many children ajá. I had, had en pasado. I had, ajá, que no, no vamos a ocupar el whole money. Eh, ¿Cómo no? My neighbor asked me how many children Children I had. Is, is, is my neighbor asked me how many children you had? No, I had. At. 
Recordemos que ahí es donde cambiamos el sujeto dependiendo de la situación, ¿verdad? Entonces ahí tendría que ser my neighbor asked me how many children I had, had en pasado. Had, had con D, ¿verdad? Con D, ajá, had. Ajá, ajá. ¿Y el do you ya no va? No, porque como se cambia, ya no lleva el do. El ajá, you ajá, cambia a de... I, porque me está preguntando a mí. Entonces, eh, y el do, pues, el, el, el auxiliar ya no, ya no va ahí. Ajá, el, el do, entonces sería, my neighbor asked me how many children I had. I had, ajá. Así I had, tiene, ah, okay. Ajá. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Thank Con esta misma estructura, había, se me había confundido. Ah, ok, no problem. That's ah, sí, correcto. No, es que se me, había, se me había ido, estaba confundido, por eso le quería consultar. No, no problem. Entonces, That's teacher, one. en la misma, en la misma, good evening, teacher. Good evening. En la misma de la, la número tres, mm -hmm. este, la, la oración quedaría, my new neighbor, when would I move to the city? Permíteme regresar. 2.5 siempre, ¿verdad? Siempre, en la número tres. Vaya, la tres de la, de la última parte, ¿verdad? Sí. Eh, ahí sería, when did you move to the city? Sería, my neighbor asked me when I had, en pasado el had, uh, moved, también en pasado, porque uh, allá en la pregunta tenemos el pasado simple. Entonces lo pasamos a pasado, perfecto. Entonces, my neighbor asked when I had moved, so had con D, y moved, to this city. To the city. Okay, teacher, thank you. Very good. Okay, okay. Let's see, we are in this one, right? Okay. Okay, welcome everybody to the class. We are going to start with the platform as usual. Okay, so this is the class of today. And this is the question already for today. So we need to check into that one. For this weekend, for this weekend, we need to finish everything. You, uh, section one, section two, also the 2.14, we need to finish that one, okay? And also we need to finish the um, midterm test, okay? For Monday, before the class, we need to finish the midterm test. So remember that midterm test has four parts. This is the first part. So uh, where they describe an advantages or disadvantages of e-commerce. These are very similar to the, to the homework video. This is only five questions, okay? So we need to check uh, advantage or disadvantage. Uh, in the part number two, uh, we're going to take the, the correct meaning of the word, only five questions as well. In the part three, um, we're going to do the, the answer. Remember with the boxes, sometimes we need to be careful about the period and the spaces, right? So convert the direct WH questions to indirect speech. Okay, that is important. Um, this is actually, this is the same that the exercise that we uh, we're doing in the other one, the 2.5. The one that you were asking today is exactly the same. And uh, then we have other two questions about true or false, okay? So true or false, five questions. And the last part is going to be the part four. So we need to check if this is a good tip or a bad tip. And then the part four and five, type in reported speech. So again, be careful about the spaces, the periods, the, uh, the signals, everything that you, that you need to use. Because if it's uh, not the correct one, exactly the correct one, or if there are some spaces or anything else is happening, it's not going to show you the correct. So everything of this one, it should be done this weekend or on Monday. For the day before the class, we need to check into that one. I mean, Monday before the class, we have to be until here, okay? That is very important, my friends. Remember that I will be sending, actually I will be sending on Tuesday the, the uh, grades. Uh, that means that 
on Monday at midnight, we have to finish up. That's why it's a very good idea for us to finish either today, Saturday, or Sunday. The platform until the midterm test is very important. Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, we are going to check the attendance. Uh, where is it? Is it here? Okay. Let's move back. Hold on a second. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry for the delay, but this is just loading by now. Oh, here it comes. Okay. So, Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present, teacher. Good. Carmen Jasmine Lopez Martinez. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. José Ernesto Osorio Morán. Present Carla. teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. I'm here teacher. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmín Baires Solórzano. Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good evening. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Good evening, present. Good evening. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramirez. Present, teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramirez. Present, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Sandra Carolina. Eh, I'm sorry, this guy stopped. Okay, here is it. Uh, Susana, Carolina, I'm sorry, Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Present teacher. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Present teacher. Okay. Nelson. Okay, I know. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Okay, so we are going to start the class of today, uh, last class. We were checking about the reading, right? You remember? So we are going to just finish the exercise and then we're going to continue with the other part. So we were checking about this part. I don't think there are many vocabulary. Actually, I don't think there are words in this one. Maybe what we can check is about, do you remember what is a claim? What is a, cl a claim? A claim is when when I'm not um, satisfied, satisfied with the product. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so when you submit a claim, is when you're not satisfied about a procedure or anything, and you submit a claim, you are telling to the right people that you are not happy about that, okay? So I guess that is the only, the only one that we need to check into this one. The other words are the same, but we're going to do the exercise. A return policy is the process a customer follows to ship previously purchased merchandise back to the store or a written guarantee given to the purchaser of a new product or service. 
number one, or the first one or the second one? What is your return policy? The process. The process a customer follows. It previously. Because it says policy. Policy. Okay, so it's going to be a written guarantee, a written warranty. Mm -hmm. given to the purchases of a new product or service. So, even if you are not going to return, you need to know sometimes how, what is the return policy, right? How many days does the store in paragraph one provide for return? 30, 21, or 14? Let's go back. What's 14? 14, very good. That is it. Number three. What was the reason the customer returned his purchase in paragraph number two? Faulty product and wanted product incompatibility issues. In paragraph two, okay, here is the truth. Uh -huh. What will be the answer? Faulty product, teacher. Faulty product, definitely. That is it. Faulty product. Something is not working properly, right? Uh, number four. How long did it take for the customer in paragraph three to receive the refund? Five months, one month, or two months? Uh huh. Two months. Two months. Very good. Nice. Perfect. So now we're going to go to the topic of today. Describe and identify theft when online shopping. That is the one for today. And we're going to read. This is not that long. And we're going to check into identity theft. Of course, the first question is, what is identity theft? Carla Vasquez is going to start. Okay, uh, what is ident identi identity? Identity. Identity theft. Theft. Okay. Identity theft is the crime of obtaining the personal or financial information of another person to use their identity, identity. to commit. Identity to commit fraud, such as making unauthorized transaction or purchase. Identity theft is committed in many different ways and its victims are typically left with the damage to their credit, finances, and Reputation. 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 Okay, very good. So that is identity theft. If when, but it's a crime, it's not correct, of course. Uh, when somebody is trying to obtain the personal or financial information. So that is not good, right? So they, they steal your, your information, sometimes the credit card number or your bank account. Sometimes even with the email, remember that the email that you have, you use that to log in into different software applications, services, things like that. So that is um, that is identity theft, and typically it's for you to, to to for them to use your information so they can get another things. Okay, understanding identity theft. Rose, could you please read this one? Hey. Identity theft occurs when someone steals your personal information, shows as your social security number, bank account number, and credit card information. Identified theft can be committed in many different ways. Some identity thieves sift through 
trash bins looking for bank account and credit card statements. More high tech metals involve accessing corporate database to a still list of customer information. Once identity thieves have the information, they are looking for they can ring a person's credit rating, understanding of the other personal information. Good. So what did you understand on this one? Uh, this is when someone uh, still um, all begin when someone is uh, still or personal information, the credit card number, also or social security number. And that's the way that the thieves uh, do the, the throw. That is it, perfect. So it's going to be like uh, when they get your personal information, here in El Salvador security card number is not important, right? But in the US it's very important. And uh, they still, as I was telling you, even the email, if they steal the email, I mean, it's going to be like not good because they will have access to any other things, right? Uh, let's see some information, some words uh, committed. Let me check. Thieves, what is thieves? It's the plural, thieves. Yeah, is yeah. are the people, right? Mm -hmm. the people that steal your information. And well, in mind that sometimes they do, or they go to the trash bins. What is the trash bin? Um, the trash is the, oh my God. When I erase a file, no. Very good. Yeah, when I erase the right. files and they, I send to the papelera recicla, <laughs> the trash ah, okay. bin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. What is thief? What is thief? Thief, thief. is like, like look, like uh, they're looking, they are researching for information. Uh -huh. So what they do is they go to the, uh, the trash bin or the recycle bin. So they look for information, bank statements and things like that. Like in the movies, teacher, it's, 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 it's so real. <laughs> and that happens, you know. Yeah, that happens, yes. Yeah. The, and you know, many the, things at the movies and you can say it's not possible, but yes, nowadays it's possible. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I was going to tell you also that in the past, you saw, uh, you check into that one in international news, but now happens here. I yes. not. I mean, I believe that maybe everybody has received one of those emails that it says, I live in Africa and I have $1 million and I don't know what to do with the money. <laughs> I mean, no, right, yes. that's not good. Or in WhatsApp, I don't know, you are going to win something, please send your information, oh, not good. So yeah, that is, that is like the identity theft. There are no other words here, but we're going to continue in the second part. Uh, Ada, Patricia, could you please read this one? Uh, important? No, identity. Identity chief increasing use computer technology to obtain other people's personal information for identity, identity, identity Proud to find such information, they may search the hard drive of stolen or discarded computers, hack into computer or computer network, access computer based public, public records, use information, gathering malware to infect computer browse, social networking sites for use deceptive emails or text message. Good, what did you understand on this one? I think um, identity tears use different 
uh, methods for um, a, agarrar inform, agarrar teacher este get, get get information the people very true i mean very nice uh, that's exactly what it says so uh, there are many ways that they do so here we can find some of those ways for example they may search the hard drives of stolen or discarded computers so if you if you are going to sell your computer you need to format everything delete everything because i mean they there are nowadays there are softwares that if you install that in a computer you can recover things that you delete pictures anything that you delete is going to be there even if you delete the, the things i mean it's not enough you need to format that one the same happens with the cell phones uh, the cell phones if you are going to change your cell phone you need to delete i mean format everything so that is the best option so uh, what else they hack into computers or computer networks access computer-based public records, use information, gathering malware. What is a malware? That is a very good question. Malware. Virus? Viruses. Yes. Very good. So those are the famous viruses, the Trojans, right? That sometimes, sometimes you are very naive in an innocent way. You click on, on a link and that's it, right? That's the only thing that you need to do sometimes. So. I never open links, you know, in Facebook sometimes appears links that the people send in messages. Goodbye. No, that's not good. Importance as victim of identity theft often do not know their identity has been stolen until they begin receiving calls from creditors or are turned down for a loan because of a bad credit score. So that is another problem that you don't know. I mean, you live your life you just click on something that was not good and three months later you don't have money you say what happened and you start researching and then you realize you were hacked not good at all so types of identity theft the first one is financial identity theft that is going to be for us main We cannot hear you, Osmin. Excuse me. Excuse me, teacher. Don't no, no worry. Financial ident identity. 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 Yeah. In financial identity, yeah, someone use another person. Ident identity or information. Identity. identity. OK, identity. Okay information uh, to obtain credit to service or benefits. This is the most common for identity. identity that. Very good. So this is the first one. I don't think that there is much to analyze. It's when somebody steals your information from your credit card, your bank, or anything like that, so they can use your money not good at all the next one it says social security identity theft here in el salvador is not that common but we're going to read about that one sandra mendez could you please read this one social, yep. social security identity theft identity identity theft identity yeah, okay, your social security number they can use in to apply for a credit card and loan and then not pay outstanding balance. Falsers can also use your number to receive medical disability and other benefits. Very good. So this is social security identity theft. And that's why uh, there in the US is, is very common that they try to get your social security number 
only with that number, they can do a lot of things. I mean, you can go or call to the bank and say, this is my security number and I need a new credit card. And since everything is easy, they receive the credit card and they start doing a lot of bad things. Uh, also to receive medical uh, insurance or benefits or medicine or many other things. So it's not good at all. Medical identity theft, this is for Anna Salme. Medical identity theft. Identity. 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 In medical identity thief, someone poses as another person to obtain free medical care. Okay, so that is the second one. Also, there is nothing much to analyze. I mean, they still the benefit of medical insurance or things like that. So I mean in our in our uh, cases, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, is more fraud for the assurance system company. Uh, do you believe that happens here? Um, yes, it's a, it's a risk. It's a risk possible. Uh, but the, when the insurance pay the claims, it is necessary that the company insurance uh, is safe. <laughs> Definitely, it should yeah. be. I mean, everything mm -hmm. maybe happen. I yes. never heard something like that, but I guess it's possible now that you yeah. think about it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. In my end, we're, we're not safe anymore. <laughs> okay, the uh, the next one it says synthetic identity theft. This one is for Guadalupe. Okay, century identity theft. Identity. Identity theft uh, is a type of fraud in which a criminal combines real combines combines real, usually stolen and fake information to create a new ident identified identity. 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 Which, uh, identity. Okay, which is used for to Use. open fraudulent account and make fraudulent portions synthetic identify identity the allow the criminal to steal money from any credit card companies or lender who extend credit based on the fake identity. Identity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, that happens. What did you understand on this one, uh, Guadalupe? This is a little bit more complex. No, teacher. No, not at all. Okay. So the synthetic identity theft is a combination of real information that of course is stolen. The thieves go and steal that information and fake information to create a new identity and then just that fake identity so they can purchase or they can do many other things okay so it's a combination that is like the difference between this and the other one lenders what is lenders Mm, like a uh, eh, borrow. Very good. It's a borrower, somebody that gives you money or things, of course. But the most common is money. So when you go to a bank, the bank lends you money. So they are the lenders. Good. Child identity theft. That is going to be for, let me check, actually for Lourdes. Please help us. Okay, child. Okay, child identity theft. Uh, in child identity theft, someone uses a child's identity for various forms of personal gain. Uh, 
This is common as children typically do not have information associated with them that could pose obstacles, obstacles. For, obstacles for the perpetrator. The fraudster may use the child's name and social security number to obtain a residence, find employment, obtain loans, or avoid arrest on outstanding warrants. Often the victim is a family member, the child of a friend, or someone or someone else close to the perpetrator. Some people even steal the personal information of the sister loves ones. My goodness, that's crazy. What did you understand on this one? Hmm. Uh, in that case, uh, talk about the perpetrator. Uh, the means is a uh, is a uh, like uh, people uh, that uh, uh, that do any bad in that case in childs in children. Uh, and the the oh, the objective is uh, gains uh, um, imagine money about uh, this this uh, this reason. For example, uh, use a a, a victim. Um, a family member and and use uh, obtain loans or avoid arrest and warrants very good that is it actually this is i mean people are crazy right imagine this imagine that somebody steals a child identity i mean the, the the children they have security number and their name the only thing that they do is to change the the age uh, instead of saying they have 10 years old they can say i am i don't know 25 years old and they can get credit cards they can get many things on with that information uh, that's crazy that's crazy and the other one that is kind of crazy is also the last part deceased do you know what is deceased no, this I don't know. Disease is death. Somebody that died already. <gasps> so in my and people are crazy. They get they steal the information, the identity of people that is already in the cemetery. <laughs> That's crazy. But I mean money is important for some people. So that is I guess not good at all. Good. The next one says tax identity theft. This one is going to be for, let me see, for Gloria. Hello, Gloria. No Gloria today. Okay, Walter, Mauricio. Okay, teacher. Identity and deportation. I know. Tax identity theft. Please. Okay, okay. Tax identity theft. Identity. And tax identity. And tax identity theft of school when someone and uses your personal information, including your social security number to fill and uh, to file. Well, to file. Uh, both is uh, state or federal and tax return in your name and call it a refund. A refund. Oh, okay, what did you understand on this one? Oh my God. 
What do you understand? I mean, in your own words. Okay. Okay, don't worry, okay. I will help. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Good. No, 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 teacher. I don't I don't understand. Okay. I don't know understand. Okay, the first question is what is tax? Anybody? Anna Selmi can tell us. The criminal identity, identity thief. No, what is the tax? What is the tax? tax. What is tax? The tax is to pay for the government about the different uh, type of transaction, for example, the VAT or, uh, or the pay for your income. Very good. So that is a tax. Mm -hmm. In this case, the tax identity theft means that some people, they are going to mm -hmm. use your information with your social security number to file a, a bogus state. That is the other question that maybe you have here. But bogus. Go ahead. it's possible that teacher, um, it's possible teacher that the, uh, in the other country is more common uh, a lot of return for uh, the tax. Yeah. But uh -huh. in our cases, um, when we are employee, mm -hmm. the withholding teacher. I'm sorry. Reten retention. Uh, withholding. With what is the name? The, the work related to the re the retainer. At uh, the retention, impuesto. the retention of the taxes. Maybe the, the, the word is withholding. Uh, and yeah, I said me it, it's common say withholding tax. Yes, uh -huh. withholding, withholding is the retention. Yes, okay. withholding. Um, according the, the law, for when we have only one uh, only one work, we don't pay more. Uh, because the withholding is a currency, a, a currency. Okay. And they, they, are, uh, they are not a uh, return, <laughs> return or... Yeah, there is not a refund, right? Yes, in, in, in for that, in El Salvador, this risk is less probability. Yeah, I mean, here, Success. if you have a refund, it's like $10, right? So maybe it's not yeah. that good idea to steal that one. And the most of the time you need to pay. Yeah. That, that happens. So, mm -hmm. and in the US, the thing is that sometimes they yes. they get back a lot of money. The refund is two, three thousand dollars $3,000. So. Yes, because it is possible that discount specific expensive for the life. In that our is. case, we don't, we can't uh, discount our expenses of the life. That is true, definitely. So that's pretty sad, but that's the way it is. Uh, okay, uh, the next uh, word here is the bagus. What is bagus? Bogus, there was a movie that a child have an imaginary friend and it's something false, I think. Very good, it's yeah. false. Yes, it's... I remember that movie. Okay, <laughs> <Bogus>. so, <laughs> nice, that's very good. Yeah, so Bogus is exactly that one, something that is not genuine, something that is fake, something that is false, like her love that she went away. So that is it, the tax return and so, they do this because of the refund. So they want the money back. And as we say in the US, it's a lot of money. Okay, the other one, it says a, a criminal identity theft. That is going to be for uh, Jasmine. 
the criminal identified theft in a criminal huh? identity. Uh, identity. In a criminal identity theft, a criminal poses as another person during an arrest to try to avoid a summons prevents the discovery of a warrant issued in the real name or avoid an arrest or conviction record. So that is it. I guess this is also very clear. So the criminal identity theft is when you use the information for other person to uh, during an arrest to try to avoid summons that are other charges that you might have prevent uh, discovery of a warrant issued in the real name. So to avoid any problems and you know that somebody is looking for you or the policy is looking for you. So what, what they do is they use a different name. I believe this is um, something that they prepare in, in anticipated way, right? I mean, they create another identity and they get that identity in the pocket. And I mean, that is a lot, a lot of criminal. So definitely it's, it's not good. Uh, identity theft protection. So these are, these are something different. These are like the protection that we can have about this one. So uh, Sandra Romero, could you please read this? Okay, teacher. Identity theft protection. Many types, many types of identity theft can be prevented. One way is to continually check the accuracy of personal documents and promotely deal with any discrepancies. May I continue? Yeah, please. Tip, if you believe you are a victim of identity theft, start, start by going to Identity Theft Go, a website administrated by the Federal Trade Commission, FTC. It provides direction on how to help you recover your identity and repair any damage you have experience. There are several identity theft protection services that help people avoid and mitigate the, the effects of identity theft. Typically, such as services provide information helping people to save work, mm -hmm. their yeah. personal information, monitor public records and private records, such as a credit reports, to alert their clients of certain transaction and status changes and provide assistance to victims to help their resolve problems associated with identity theft. Very good. What did you understand on this one? Um, if we have maybe um, the tab about someone else take our information, um, maybe can go to the website and, 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 and request help about that and also request maybe to, to receive information about unusual, um, serve, unusual um, when you are doing something that you need to do <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and request that, that you be notified about that. So you can pay attention about that and, and if someone else take your information, know as soon as possible. Very good, perfect. Actually, that is it, I mean, uh, you, here in El Salvador is not that, that big. I mean, there is not a department or a website that you can go to, but definitely you can call the bank and they can help you. Actually, it's, I mean, it's like four or three months after. The activity, that is the area. <laughs> ah, very good, <laughs> nice. So, um, yeah, I mean, in the US, this is something that uh, is kind of, um, a problem, uh, we're not going to continue that, that they want to avoid. Uh, well, we're going to read this after we check the attendance. In the meantime, we're going to watch a video. Uh, let me see which is the first one. No, this is the first one. Okay. So let me just change something here for you to see the video with uh, the sound. And of course, as usual, we're going to check and you are going to tell me what you understood about this one. Okay. Here we go, my friends. The Black Axe 
is synonymous with cybercrime. It's spread around the world. They've claimed to have as many as 30,000 members globally. Uh, how much were they trying to get out of you? Like 96,000 and saying that I was going to go to jail. The various law enforcement agencies operating out of various countries globally have a huge problem tackling transnational organized crime. In October 2021, eight men were arrested in Cape Town on serious fraud charges. It was quite a coup following a protracted international investigation involving Interpol and the FBI, as well as an elite squad of South African police. The men were allegedly members of the Black Axe, a notorious Nigerian organized crime group. But their targets hadn't been major financial institutions or even local businesses. Instead, their frauds came wrapped up in romance, literally in that the gang's entire operation revolved around defrauding lonely singletons around the world of their life savings. What I lost with him was probably well over 500,000. It was humiliating, very humiliating. The method was simple create a fake dating profile for a fictitious Prince Charming, find a divorcee or widow, or just someone naive enough to fall for it, and strike up a fictitious relationship. They're going for loneliness and they're targeting people's need for companionship. They're using keyword searches on, on platforms like Facebook. It's, it's very easy. Once embedded, the stories would start. They needed money for a pressing debt to operation, or even to release an inheritance. Who wouldn't want to help their partner in need? Of course, they'd never met in real life. It's around deception, it's around cheating, and it's around using those things in order to gain a financial advantage. It's efficient, it's, it's effective, and at the end of the day, fraud is all about money. The gang is accused of scamming over 100 victims, mainly in the US, and netting almost $7 million over the last decade. But romance scams are common enough, even if few reach the levels of organization and success. It's just another way that fraud is evolving with the times. My goodness, this is the business of crime. In this episode, we're looking at the future of fraud, how sophisticated deception, increasingly complex scams, and the opportunities offered by new technology are being put to use, satisfying the same old greed and cruelty. What do we think of when we hear the word fraud? More than likely, there's a couple of competing impressions that come to mind. There's the gritty, everyday sort of financial crime, typified by the figure of the scam caller who peels off a few pin numbers from vulnerable senior CCs. Then perhaps there's the jolly and presumably always unsuccessful farce. The junk email promising a vast and unexpected $800 million inheritance from a recently deceased industrialist. Yours in exchange for a relatively small tax, of course. We have all gotten those bogus emails from a certain Nigerian prince who promises to share his vast fortune as long as you give him your bank account number. Well, investigators say these schemes are now becoming more sophisticated and expensive, costing victims, in this case, millions of dollars. It's very easy and very convenient for offenders to put out blanket approaches to large groups of individuals, and they only really need a, a small number of individuals to respond back, to engage with them in order to be successful. Or maybe it's the lone bedroom hacker, tinkering away in their darkened room, prodding at the Bank of America's online defenses to check for weak points. Like any cliche, there's at least a grain of fat in all three depictions, even if the world of fraud has become dramatically more sophisticated over the past decade or so. Adaptation is key. As defenses become stronger, scams increase in sophistication. Sophisticated malware, social engineering, brute force attacks. These are some of the contemporary tools noted by experts working in the field. Fraud is unsurprisingly big business. The US saw this as a priority. They are losing $4 billion annually to cybercrime. The FBI charging 80 people with trying to scam at least $46 million out of their victims by using fake online romance schemes or hacking businesses. It starts with something plausible. One 78-year-old victim was conned out of her entire life savings after clicking through on a link offering a deal on a discounted 
patented electric toothbrush. Another fell victim to a convincingly cloned website that mimicked the popular platform Money Supermarket. Fraud has one of the lowest rates of reporting across all crime types. There is a high level of victim blaming that exists for fraud, and I think fraud is one of those offences where there is active participation on the part of the victim. So victims in many circumstances have willingly transferred money. Victims feel very ashamed. There was one case um, in, of which I'm aware where a victim in the US committed suicide. Successful scams require incompetent institutions. Take bank fraud, for example. Theft wouldn't be possible with adequate defences, and some of the world's biggest banks are often falling woefully short. Some try to address this by hiring dedicated staff. Others have blamed social media, where many of the scams are seeded, even if the biggest platforms don't seem particularly fussed with addressing concerns. Fraud isn't simply a matter for the old, the lovesick, or the technologically challenged. Warnings have even been raised about the security in the world of online video games. From Roblox to Fortnite, young players have been targeted around the world for bogus in-game purchases, or even for the recruitment of money mules, teenagers who agree for a third party to drop illicit funds into their account in exchange for a cut of the profits. Illicit within three, four days, there'll be like four grand in the account and you can have five. It's slightly harder to feel sympathy for the victims of a major recent crypto fraud. The scam was based out in South Korea, where 470 investors pumped almost $2 million into a scheme that offered guaranteed returns using the Kimchi Premium, aka the gap in crypto prices between South Korean exchanges and others across the world. The student caught by Korean Customs Service had sent around 35 million US dollars to Hong Kong, for which they earned the kimchi premium of 1.7 million US dollars. Three people were arrested after complaints about the alleged fraud when the promised returns didn't materialize. Just the latest similar case in an unregulated boom industry rife with deception. By definition, fraud is hardly the most glamorous crime. If successful, it doesn't involve real-world violence or even a face to put to a name. It's anonymous and clandestine. It's also cowardly and exceptionally vicious in its own right. It relies on the very worst of human nature, the predatory taking advantage of the vulnerable, the cruel deceiving the lonely and desperate. It can center on an appeal to individual greed, like the get-rich-quick promises of the bogus crypto speculators in South Korea and beyond. It isn't a problem that is ever likely to go away. How do you eradicate cruelty and greed? As scams get increasingly sophisticated and scammers ever more technologically savvy, law enforcement and cybersecurity will continue to scrabble to keep up. For the Nigerian nationals caught running their romance scams out of South Africa, the outlook isn't particularly rosy. If guilty, they'll face 20 years in prison. It isn't clear exactly what that will do to recover their victims' lost livelihoods there will be many more victims. We are not close to seeing the end of the Black Axe. Good, what did you understand on this one? <clears throat> hey, teacher. Hello. I, I, I see, teacher, everything in the world is business, even crime and a lot of crime is the product of identity theft. That is true. That is a business as well. I mean, um, yeah, it's crazy, you know. It's crazy what you can do, what you can find about this one. Is that teacher um, it, uh, related to that the, the cyber fraud? is um, huge, it's related to the huge uh, money. It's related to the, struct the criminal structure, very, very <laughs> formal. It is, uh, they use the sophisticated methods for, for do the fraud. The, the amount, the, individual the the re, the report report girl the report the reporter report, report yes the reporter is say um, the different examples 
uh, in in South Korea. South Korea. Uh, yeah. The amount is forty five million dollar in the process. The, it's a huge money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, in in I the, the important of the the regulation related to the the uh, cyber transaction in the bank, uh, the different warranties or what is that? Yeah, the cyber security in the general the cyber security. But in El Salvador, teacher is is sad that you need to have um, the specific uh, insurance for when you had a fraud, a zero fraud, the the bank responds automatically only if the, the how do you say the client it's not the clients yes the, the customer the, client. the customer the customer have the specific type of insurance you know in, in my opinion the the, the experience when 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 the customer have a, a fraud, is a fat the the responsibility responsibility of the bank cyber cyber uh, cyber fraud. That's in my opinion. Opinion. That in is my true. <laughs> yeah, it's totally different in the country. Even so, I I have seen that they persecute. I mean. Uh, but that's what I was telling you before. Uh, in the past, you see only that happening in other countries, but now it's very common in El Salvador. And also it's very common that they get the people. I mean, they investigate, they research, and sometimes there are a group of people that they are working on that one. I mean, uh, it's happening more frequently. So we need to be more careful about that one. That is for sure. Any other comment? <laughs> I think um, that, oh, sorry. Uh, go, go, go. Okay, I'm going to be fast. <laughs> I think that is very sad teacher because nowadays women are the target for the scammers. I was reading about it. And in fact, I watched the movie, The Tinder Swindler. Yeah. And oh my God, it's, sad. Yeah. it's, it's very my God, it's very nasty, I think. Yeah, I don't know why this, this kind of people can do that, but yeah. it's their lifestyle. But they talking about in the video that uh, there are many men uh, looking for a dating. They look like a handsome man and they fall in love with the girl and then they uh, come, uh, they made the fraud, uh, but it's true. It's say, it's true. Uh, yeah. How can I say, very badly? It's very bad, definitely. Yeah, it's very bad, yes. Uh, uh, they mentioned that they have a uh, software engineering. They, yeah. they manage many platforms many things to do this but it's very sad yeah really it's very sad all for also for for we the women's now in the social media it's very suddenly in instagram appears to me uh, someone wants to follow you and i got the picture oh what a handsome man oh it's but <laughs> i i read something and say i immediately block because oh no 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 <laughs> that sounds good yeah <laughs> because it's very sad we had to we had to pay attention we had to pay attention in that because i we don't have millions but the dollars but it's very it's very bad it's very bad 
Yeah, actually, that is the next video about that is about the Tinder Swindler. Oh, yeah, about. yes, nice picture, nice movie. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna see a video, it's not that long, it's around 10 minutes, but we're going to check how that okay. can happen and we're going to analyze on that. So, yes, and that is true. I mean, they say also that in, in the video that we checked, that they have web pages that mimic the real websites of banks or the government, so you can click and enter your password, and that's it, right? You are drained. Carla. Okay. Uh, yes, the cybersecurity is very important for the for the e-commerce or for the websites because the fraud is the order of the day. It's very important not to share our financial financial information on unsecured web uh, uh, web website. Websites. Yes. Um, Yes, a clear example here was the theft of thirty dollar from the Chivo wallet. Yeah. People, people who had access to the doing number, literally stole thirty dollar from people who have not downloaded the application. When, when, when this. Uh, people don't like application surprise don't have the thirty dollars. Pretty sad that is that happened. I mean, that happens. I mean, here in El Salvador, there are a lot of people that they try to get something for free, and we need to be careful. In, yeah. Teacher, in in the case um, mentioned, uh, Carlita, um, this is a risk. Uh, for the right to coins, mm -hmm. crypto, uh, crypto money, Cri crypto, yes, coins. crypto, yeah. crypto coins, yes, because when when uh, the people do the transaction, mm -hmm. the transaction is not possible. The the audit, the process, because it's part of the 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 wallet mm -hmm. in the, in the in El Salvador the Chivo wallet but the wallet there are a lot of wallets yeah. for for trade mm -hmm. for trade uh, of the uh, kind of coins but it's impossible to to how do you say rastrear to track it's, to track, track, yes, to track the transaction. Yeah, the risk is high for the. Uh, no, process. yes, it, uh, in the in this case in El Salvador was easy to track who struck the thirty dollar because in the application uh, have registration that name, date, and hour when struck. Uh, Extra, extra the thirty dollars. Yeah, so it's, it's very complicated that part. It's right? very complicated, yes. <laughs> because yes, I mean anything that you do online in a software or an application can be tracked. The problem is that sometimes you can't. I mean, maybe here in El Salvador, the people they didn't know that they can get a, a false IP number and many other things, so you avoid to be tracked. It's possible not to be tracked with that kind of tools. Uh, but yes, anything is big trouble. Maybe the problem is uh, uh, that the kind of people that subtract that money, I mean, uh, is because you have um, some, how can I say, they were friends of you. I mean, that they get the doing numbers so you can get, they can get the money. So that is pretty sad, right? And the measure of security are low, teacher. That is true, that is true. Well, lots of problems here. So we're going to check the attendance and then we're going to do another exercise. So let's see how it goes. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Carmen Jasmine Lopez Martinez. 
present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamez. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. Present teacher. Okay. Jose Ernesto Osorio Morán. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Ofelia Oris Jana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solórzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present teacher. Good. Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Present teacher. Good. Zulma Rosabra López García. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltran. Present. Good. Perfect. So today we are going to have, we're going to repeat an activity that we did the last cycle, the last uh, uh, module. Uh, so we're going to do a dictation. So please everybody get some paper, some pen, a pencil is better in case you need to, to erase things. And I'm going to dictate a paragraph. It's a small paragraph. Remember that I'm going to go very slow. I'm going to repeat. And at the end, I'm going to repeat the whole paragraph. And then I'm going to present you the paragraph and you are going to check how was that? Okay, so do you have the paper and the pencil ready? Yes. Are, yes. Good. Are you ready for rock and roll? Okay. So, please pay attention, here we go. Identity theft. Identity theft. Identity theft happens when, happens when, happens when someone uses when someone uses your sensitive data, uses your sensitive data, sensitive data to pose. Sensitive? Sensitive data to pose. to pose as you, to pose as you, to pose as you, or steal from you, or, or steal from steal. you, steal. Cures. Okay, or steal from you. Or steal from you, period. Identity thieves. Identity thieves. Thinks. 
identity thieves. Identity thieves may drain. May drain. May drain your bank. Your bank. An investment account and investment accounts and investment account accounts comma open new credit lines open new credit lines Open new credit lines. Comma. Get utility service. Get utility service. Get utility service. Comma. Steal your tax refund steal your tax refund steal your tax refund coma use your insurance use your insurance Use your insurance information. Information. To get medical treatments. To get medical treatments. To get medical treatments. Coma, or give police, or give police, or give police your name and address. Your name and address. your name and address. When they are arrested. When they are arrested. When they are arrested. They are arrested. Period. And that's it. I'm going to read all the paragraphs so you can check. Here we go. Identity theft happens when someone uses your sensitive data to pose as you or steal from you. Identity thieves may drain your bank and investment accounts. Open new credit lines, get utility service, steal your tax refund, Use your insurance information to get medical treatments or give police your name and address when they are arrested. Very easy. No. This is something that we read today. This is something that was in the website that we were reading. Now sure. we're going to go ahead. Could you please repeat the first line? I, I, I didn't hear well when I start to write. Okay, identity theft happens Happen. when someone uses when your sense. Uh -huh. Someone uses uh -huh. your sensitive data. 
your sensitive data. Sensitive data. Data. To pose as you. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. I, you got it. Very good. Thank you. You are welcome. Now I'm going to show you here the little paragraph and you check what happens. Okay. So, to say it. I say it. Identity theft happens when someone uses your sensitive data to pose as you or steal from you. Identity thieves may drain your bank and investment accounts, open new credit lines, get utility service, steal your tax refund, use your insurance information to get medical treatment or give police your name and address when they are arrested. So please circle the words that are not correct. And then let's check together. Okay. So, did somebody or anybody had everything correct? No errors? Anybody? No. Who oh, has five mistakes or less? Five or less? Me too. Very good. That's nice. Me too. Teacher. Good. Nice. Okay, some words here are not words that we use very in a normal way, but this is something that I made uh, and I took it from the reading that we did before. So uh, maybe we don't use that any, uh, that much, but we saw the word. Whenever we're reading, sometimes we need to pay attention on the pronunciation of the word. For example, today I was checking about identity, right? And some of you, you were saying identity, but that is not correct, identity. Because of this, Imagine that you are writing something that somebody says and, and they do not pronounce well or you don't know what is the pronunciation of the word, it's going to have a big problem. Teacher, Go ahead. Um, what is the means the train and pose? Very good. Pose is when you pretend, when you, for, for example, imagine that I come here and I have a, a I get dressed like a doctor and I say to you, uh, I am the doctor, I sent you and whatever. I pose, okay. I pretend I lie. And drain is when you have something, for example, water, uh, that is very common with water and you drain, you take out. Oh, okay. In this okay. case, it's drain yeah, yeah. money. Good. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Uh, for the mistakes that, that you made, uh, the ones that you circle, try to check the pronunciation. That is the first one. Sometimes we don't know the pronunciation of the words and that's why we make mistakes. Sometimes- I understand, uh -huh. oh, no. I understand post mm -hmm. with post. Ah, <laughs> uh, post, uh -huh. yeah. The pronunciation is very similar, post. Yeah, post, and post. And post. Mm -hmm. the, no, but also post, pause. <laughs> pause. It's similar, ah, post. Look at uh -huh. that. That's why sometimes I, when I do the dictation, I speak very slow because it's not the same. A pulse, a pulse. Ah. <laughs> yeah. It's not the same to say pause. Pause. That to say post. post. Yes. And, and post. then say pause. Uh -huh. yeah. So similar, but not the same. Right. When you say drink, I put an G at the end. Drink. Drink. Ah, okay. Mm, drink. I don't know, <laughs> but drink. <laughs> And the other, when you say utility, I I listen utilities. Ah, okay, in plural. Mm -hmm. Util utilities, yes. Very good, perfect. So please check on the words that you made incorrectly. The next time is going to be different. I'm telling you right now. The next time I am not going to dictate. One of you is going to dictate. And that is going to happen next week. So, in advance, I'm going to send the paragraph so you can practice one person, a short paragraph, and that person is going to dictate. So let's see how it goes. Ah, that is a good one. <laughs>
Okay, so we're going to watch the other video that is for today so we can check and provide any feedback, any comments on this one. So this is Simon. Hello, Simon. <laughs> Here we go. Five. And they said, well, that's yeah, one of many names that he's been using. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're recounting the untold story of the Tinder swindler. It's almost like the perfect scam. For this deep dive, we're looking at the details behind and beyond the iconic Netflix documentary investigating dating app fraudster Simon Leviev. What do you think of the Tinder swindler and his victims? Are there any other details we missed? Let us know in the comments. Simon Leviev's Origins To quickly recap, Simon Leviev, otherwise known as the Tinder swindler, was the subject of a 2022 Netflix documentary that detailed his dating scams. This is someone who is well-traveled and still works very hard, so I thought, oh, great. Let's swipe uh, right on that. He would take advantage of women by luring them in with lavish luxury, only to steal money from them to fund his lifestyle. But Simon didn't begin with this elaborate deception. He wants me to come to Amsterdam and bring some cash to him, $25,000. Simon Leviev was born Shimon Yehuda Hayut in Israel in 1990, where his family lived humbly. But it's clear that Shimon desired more and wasn't willing to earn it honestly. This was the total opposite of how he wanted to present his life in social media. At the age of 15, he told two family friends, Avi and Shavi Coben, that there were problems at home. So he convinced the Cobins to let him stay in their apartment in Brooklyn, New York for six months. A few years later in 2008, while they were on vacation, they allowed him to stay there again, where he allegedly helped himself to Avi's credit card. He didn't hold back, buying himself a first-class round-trip ticket between New York and Tel Aviv, hotel suites, and even renting a Rolls-Royce. Around this time, he also reportedly engaged in his first Tinder swindler-style scam. Courtney Simmons Miller from Cambridge said she met Shimon while living in Cyprus when the two worked at a shopping mall together. He convinced Courtney that he was a secret millionaire about to receive his inheritance and asked her to become his personal assistant. Shimon then provided Courtney with stolen credit card information to spend in her name, getting the two arrested. Shimon fled back to Israel, leaving Courtney to spend two years in jail before she was acquitted. In 2010, he apparently took flying lessons, but he was also busy with more scams, stealing checks from a couple he babysat for in Tel Aviv. The couple went to the police, who issued an arrest warrant, but Shimon left the country under a false identity. This I really hate it. Do you know what makes a man sexy? I don't care. If you're like most guys, <laughs> I think. Teacher. This is when the famous scams began, the extent of his crimes. After fleeing Israel to Europe, Shimon began operating under different names and scamming the women he dated. Over the next few years, he started to use Tinder to meet victims, defrauding them of around $150,000. However, after Finnish women reported him, he was arrested there in 2015 and the following year sentenced to three years in prison. If you think that taught him a lesson, think again. In 2017, he was extradited to Israel, where he faced charges related to the checks he'd stolen while babysitting. So he changed his name to Simon Leviev, taking the same last name as diamond mogul Lev Leviev. His father is this diamond tycoon. Over the next few months, he would move between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem before returning to Europe to prey on more women. Why would Simon do this to me? This was a friend who I really cared about. The documentary picks up from here. Never hear him so cold in my life. It was like that person on the phone was no longer my boyfriend. He began meeting and defrauding women all over Europe, including Cecilia Filhoy and Pernilla Huholm. It's estimated that between 2017 and 2019, he conned his many victims out of a collective $10 million. I had eight, nine creditors, you know. It's a lot of emails coming down on you at the same time. As we find out through the film, an investigation by Norwegian newspaper Verdensgang led to his case gaining much more notoriety, resulting in an arrest by Interpol in 2019. What happened to his accomplices? While we know what happened to Simon Leviev after being arrested in Greece, it was one of the best moments of my life. What remains a mystery is the fate of his accomplices. Throughout the various stories told by victims, familiar faces continued to appear. So what became of them? 
If it wasn't real, then did he lie to me as well? Perhaps the most prominent was Leviev's bodyguard, Peter, who also seemed to enjoy the outlandish expenses funded by the Tinder swindler's victims. He played an important role in convincing people that Simon was genuinely in danger, as his victims were sent pictures of him bloody and bruised after an alleged attack. He just says that they were going after me, thank God. For Peter, if not, I would have been dead. While he was never charged for any crimes connected to Simon scams, Peter has lawyered up and is suing Netflix. He claims he was never aware of the cons, and his reputation has been soiled due to the alleged association. Aileen, one of the victims from the documentary, later claimed on a podcast that she overheard him raising payment concerns with Leviev. On the same podcast, a security expert claimed that Peter, like other bodyguards, could have been easily duped as they lacked the resources for proper background checks. In the documentary, another notable, albeit less prominent, accomplice was Simon's business partner, Avishay. The extent of his complicity in Simon's scams is unknown, but a British doctor came forward after the documentary aired, saying that she dated him. As in Simon's scam, they met on Tinder, where she experienced crazy nights out with him and his entourage, including Simon Leviev. At one point, she claims that Simon began giving her a lot more attention once he clocked a Louis Vuitton case she owned. However, when Simon cut a holiday short with an alleged security concern, the doctor bought her own ticket home instead of flying to the crew's next destination. The relationship fizzled out from there. Was Avishay trying his own version of the scam, or was he simply attempting to start a relationship while traveling with Simon? We can't know for sure. Lastly, another figure who's gotten a lot of attention is the apparent mother of Simon Leviev's child. She was present during Cecilia Philhoy's first encounters with the Tinder swindler, and played a role in convincing Cecilia he was a good person. It turns out, she testified against Leviev in 2015, when he was sentenced to his first stint in prison. While some may have judged her as an accomplice in his scam, others have speculated that she may have been in a vulnerable position herself. What happened to Simon Leviev? The media storm that followed the Verdon's Gong report in 2019 severely hindered Simon Leviev's ability to scam unsuspecting women. So he was hiding in Prague and he had absolutely nowhere else to go besides me. He always told me, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. These events eventually led to his arrest. Back in Israel, he finally had to face those old charges he'd been dodging for so long. Convicted of theft, fraud, and forgery, he was sentenced to 15 months in prison. For many, that sentence seems unsatisfyingly short, given the damage he left in his wake. But the story's ending gets even worse. It turns out that because of the coronavirus pandemic, Simon was released after just five months. Needless to say, he hasn't compensated any of his victims for their losses either. This is the real deal. The Bentley of the Ferrari. In an almost Wolf of Wall Street-like move, after his release, Simon created a website where he offered business advice for a fee. He also started various social media accounts and even rejoined Tinder. However, following the release of the Netflix documentary in 2022, Tinder's parent company Match Group Inc. finally banned him from all of their dating apps. His Instagram account was also flooded with comments holding him accountable for his actions. He's hopped from various social media platforms trying to retain a following. Look at me, I am so pretty, love me, want me! Still, he has never been able to stay on one for long before getting reported, expelled, or deleting them himself. As of writing, he's even on Cameo, selling personalized short videos of him. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our- Okay, so that is that fantastic story. <laughs> so, comments, this is the time for you. This is the case that uh, Rosita mentioned that about the fraud of the Tinder. In his, um, Simon created a false um, personal life. Yeah. The, the incredible is that the his life was create credible, 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 and the the amount of the fraud ten million dollars. Imagine that thing. The, <laughs> in the, the economic his economic situation, um, he was in back back room. Bankruptcy. Bankrupt? 
but for the in the social media he he was a, he was rich rich man yeah. attractive man for the ladies <laughs> you know this is the new world brave new world no it's incredible it's incredible yeah very good and he's been in jail only like five months say five months that's nothing yes, 10 million dollars because the in what is i but this interesting the 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 time of the how do you say it how do you say fine teacher no it's not fine is the the it's not fine is uh, the time of the jail Ah, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, it's the time in jail. I don't remember. There is a word for yes. that one. Huh? The time of the jail is uh, few Ridiculous. months. I mean, that's yes, right. few months. But for the specific countries, the, the most important is the pay the tax. Don't, don't, don't matter what is the, the, the activity for. <laughs> Yeah. That is true. That is the most important for government. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other comments? Nobody else's. Hello. Okay, no more comments. So I guess it's kind of interesting because of many things. Uh, first of all, uh, I believe that the real problem is that the victims, they really wanted to believe that one because I mean, sometimes what happens is that when somebody is attractive and he, he pay attention to, to you, it's like, oh my goodness, that is amazing. Me personally, when that happens, it's like, no, this can't be good, right? I mean, it's it's not real. That person wants something, right? It's so good, it's so spacious. It's so good to be real. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, if you are realistic, maybe you can check yeah. something like that for a moment. But if you really are looking for somebody to love, you, you can fall in that kind of things that is that is not good right i mean you you see that and you know this is not going to be good only for reality yeah. show teacher yeah so i guess victims they have a problem maybe they were alone they were they need a love but it's not an excuse i mean you need to be careful right you need to be careful on what is going to be not only the relationship but your friends i mean anybody that is around you you need to be careful about that one yeah. but the problem is the attractiveness right that is the real at the, at the end the girl was uh, a swindle with a lot of money and she mentioned that he's still paying all the money that she retired for the bank the bank to give him imagine there is another and, problem. Yeah, and for the other side, when I was this this movie, the other girl was uh, a little smart because he he liked to use uh, designer uh, clothes, Prada, Gucci, a lot of uh, many clothes that uh, are very expensive, and in a moment uh, she. She put all the clothes in eBay and he was in contact with him and she said, I have to, I have to recover my money. And she sold all the, the clothes and he, she, oh my God, she kept, she, she kept, she, uh -huh, she kept the money and that, and it, she mentioned that recovered around 2000 
2,000, no, 12,000 or wow. $15,000 with all the clothes that she buy by eBay because there is a was a designer clothes. That's the way that she recovered something of money that he he over to to her. Yeah, I mean it's it's incredible, right? I still don't I don't know how. I mean, the first as I was telling you, it's too attractive, and maybe you know that it's not going to be faithful. Uh, a man like that. In mind that he's worker and he's nice, he has a job, everything is normal. I mean, he's going to have a lot of women, right? Only because of that is is not a good idea. But in, in mind that that man is asking for money, that is another problem, right? So it's not only that I believe that he's, he doesn't love me, but he's asking money and I give the money. So yeah, that is that is a big problem. It's a big problem. Yes, teacher, because the frauders are they are smart. Yeah. That is true. Very so, smart. But also depends on you, right? That you analyze and you say, mm, why is this guy that says that is millionaire asking me for money? Right? So you need to be careful. It's, it's something different to, In, to give the heart than to, to give the money, right? Teacher, have you seen the movie of the Leon, Leonardo, Leon, Leonardo DiCaprio? In Spanish, is Atrapame si puedes. Catch me if you can. Yeah. And that is yeah, basically the true story. That happened as well. So, and actually, that is the topic for today. We, this is Friday, and we're going to speak about this kind of situation. So, for example, have you seen that, uh, that TV show, Breaking Bad? Have you seen that? Yes. It's amazing, right? Amazing. So it's amazing, amazing because he, uh, I, if you haven't seen that one, I will tell a little bit of a uh, wrap up of that story. He's a, he's a teacher, of, he's a chemistry teacher and he has a poor life and he doesn't have money and uh, he, uh, he has cancer and he's going to die. And he says, I mean, I'm not going to leave anybody, anything to my family. And he, little by little, he gets into problems, right? Uh, because the life presents some situations and he starts creating drugs, right? But yes. they, I have because you said that one. The, the, according to the theory of the fraud, the, the fraud happened happens mm -hmm. when there, there is motivation, opportunity, and rationalization is okay, teacher. Rationalization, yeah. Yeah, opportunity, motivation, and rationalization is a triangle of the fraud. And for example, the, the people eh, have, um, values, uh, principle, uh, principle, values. principles, yeah. but depend of the situation, for example, in the movies, the specific situation is related to the, the illness, mm -hmm. the illness for, uh, and uh, their exists a need for the money, a lot of money, then there is a motivation. And he, what you say, he, he saw, he saw a, a opportunity to get a lot of money. Actually, that is, that is the thing, right? That we are analyzing here, why? Why, I mean, I believe, I believe that everybody, sometimes we have the opportunity of do something incorrect and take advantage of that one, everybody. Sometimes little things, sometimes big deals. Uh, but the majority of people, we don't take that opportunity, right? It's like, uh, okay, that's something that is not for, for me. Thank you, right? Bye. But why? Why some people, they prefer to go the easy way. I mean, this guy, the swindler of Tinder, he was living in Israel, he, but he wanted something like a, a life that was full of luxury. And he started creating a situation. I mean, 
imagine that person sitting down saying, I'm handsome, I can do this, I can do this other thing, and creating his own personality, his own, I mean, that is something that is not like a need. He doesn't have a need. He, he was just a regular person. Because, because he, maybe he, he is um, ambitious. Maybe. So that depends also on the personality, right? As you mm -hmm. say, the values, the values that we have. But I mean, that is another another question. There are good people that come from bad family. And the opposite. There are bad people that come from good family, family with values that teach uh, a lot of things, good things. But at the end, they don't care. They go to the bad, to the bad path. So why do you believe that happens? How, how is that possible? In this case, teacher, the, the, the situation is con conscient, conscient. Yeah. Because when the people um, do a fraud, um, the people, like you say, evaluate, evaluate, evaluate the consequences. Uh, this is 10 million compared six months in the jail. Okay, this the balance. And, but it's very interesting the, 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 the topic related to the fraud because the, but why do you, it's possible you, your reput, reputation is okay, teacher. Yeah, reputation. Uh, is. You, you, the reputation uh, loss, what happened with your family, what happened with your values, what happened? Yes, but I, I think, or I thought uh, the consequences, I prefer to, 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 to do the fraud. Yeah, to, to run mm -hmm. the fraud, yeah. yeah. So that is true, I mean, it's kind of interesting how people prefer the easy way, right? Uh, another problem is that nowadays there are rewards. I mean, people that they do kind of things like that, they become famous, right? And people <laughs> admire them. So the society has changed that much that, I mean, he appears in movies nowadays. I mean, imagine that that kind of thing. Yes, I mean, the problem the problem is teacher when the in past, uh, and you said your conscient, mm -hmm. uh, you press pressure your conscient. Uh, this is is not profile for the the frauder. For yeah. the frauder, don't matter. Don't matter in yeah. sleep very, very well. <laughs> yeah. It's very interesting how the behavior of human happens, right? Because I, I know that everybody will, they, I mean, the most of the people are not like that, but there are many people. And that, that happens, I mean, if you if you see the, all the all the TV shows or the documentaries about the serial killers, for example, Everything happens like that. And they they look like a normal person, very happy, right. good the, neighbors. The, the, in, in the general teacher, there are a specific uh, history, no history, story, no history. Yes, history. Yeah. Behind the white, the uh, the hyper is a specific. Uh, type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I well, the question that I make myself is how is going to be the world in 10, 20 years? For example, nowadays the social media, I mean Instagram and all the influencers, they are changing the world. They are making more money than the people that they really work. I mean, I believe that probably in the future they will run for presidents or governors and things like that. And because they're popular, they're gonna win. I mean, what is going to happen? 
how it's going to be that world is is going to be kind of I don't know. Good. Any other opinion on this one? This is the topic for today. So anybody can speak. Hello, everybody. What do you believe about this one? Crowds, behavior. I mean, nobody's perfect. Sometimes we do incorrect things. That happens. But it's not the same to do something that is a little thing. And then you feel bad about that one. That this person, that they sit down and create a big plan to do a lot of things. It's definitely not the same. So what do you think, everybody? About breaking bad, becoming a bad person, little by little. <laughs> Nobody else's. Okay, so then we're going to do individual practice because it's Friday and we have a few more minutes. Let's see who's going to be the first one. Uh, Osmin. Right, sir. Hello, how are you? I am fine here starting my job. You're in your job today? Yes, today. Okay. Nice, perfect. The good thing is that you have the chance to be with us, so that is nice. Yes. Very I good. Have a chance of carrying. Yes, it's important. Yeah, that is the most important. I mean, sometimes that is good. I mean, if your job gives you some benefits and gives you the opportunity to to do what you want, and I mean, to do your job, but also do other things, that's fine. That is amazing. Exactly. What time do you finish tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, eight a.m. Eight a.m. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And uh, may I ask you something that is a personal question? Uh, excuse me, teacher. May I ask you a personal question? Uh, yes, uh, uh, for you, yeah. No, I am going to ask you a personal question. Oh, yeah. Uh, what did you decide to shave? Uh, Why, Osmin? Why did you decide to remove the mustache? Ah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I removed the mustache because it's, it's, it's uh, how do you say, molestia? Ah, uh, you, you have itchy or something like that. Uh, exactly. And my, 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 my daughter say, Pap, papi, no mustache. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, to be honest with you, that's what I thought. I thought that somebody told you, uh, why don't you remove the mustache? I thought it was your girlfriend or your, or your wife. Sometimes, you know, women are like, let's, let's remove that one. So I, but your daughter is, is fine. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, but when I have mustache, all they're saying, my, my, my daughter. I'm sorry, what, what did they say? Uh, the, the, the daughter, the, 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 what is the mayor, la mayor? Uh, the oldest, the oldest daughter. Uh, the older daughter, uh, uh, she, I like most. Papi, no. <laughs> I, very good. The problem is that. <laughs> You had to cook the house. No, 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 I like mustache. <laughs> okay, so maybe what what we do sometimes is some months with mustache and other months with no mustache, right? So both are happy sometimes. So that is that is the trick. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good. Perfect. Thank you, Yasmin. Okay, teacher, thank you. Let's see, uh, Gloria. Hello, Gloria. Hello, teacher. How are you today? I'm very dark <laughs> in the in the work. So you're working still? Yes. Imagine. What time do you finish? At the five o'clock. 
Uh, so you're not working anymore. Uh, I, in this moment, I work. So you are like an, doing an extra work. You are moving on, advancing in the work. In my, so today, what time are you going to finish your, your job, your work? Uh, more or less um, um, in two hours. In two hours? More my less. goodness. So it's going to be around one in the morning. That is very <laughs> early. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And do you work tomorrow? Yes. Um, All day long. Okay. No, 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 it's, um, it's uh, eight, but um, 12 p.m. Ah, okay, the morning only. Yes. Okay, at least you are going to rest in the afternoon. And what do you do on Saturdays afternoons? Um, um, creo, creo. Um, por... I am the, uh, in, no, como le digo, me invitaron. You got invited. Yes, uh, at uh, first, um, no, communion first, communion first. A first coming in. Okay. So you're going to go to the church in the afternoon. Yes. Uh, uh, in, uh, After that? After that, uh, at, uh, at the lunch. Ah, okay. Okay. That sounds sounds like a plan. And then, of course, you're going to rest. Yes. Okay. So you work a lot. So uh, be careful. You need to rest a little bit. One in the morning is a lot of work. But anyway, sometimes we need to do that one, right? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Gloria. Uh, you're welcome. Nice. Let's see who else is around here. Uh, uh, Lourdes. Hello, Lourdes. No, Lourdes. Okay. Adriana. Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. Very well. Why and tighter? I know, but today is Friday at least. Yes. Do you work tomorrow? No, no teacher. Okay, that is nice. So you can rest. Very nice. Mm -hmm. What do you usually do on Saturdays? Um, usually, may the clean the house and um and um. Hi. Um, tarde, how to say tarde? In the afternoons. Ah, in the afternoon. And uh, I go to the park with my sons. Okay. It sounds it sounds very nice. That's good. Um what kind of what kind of music do you like? Uh I like reggaeton, bachata, merengue, salsa, pancheras. Um and really all, all music I like. All kind of music. So you really like to dance, I guess. Yes, teacher. Okay. Do you I usually like go dancing? Yes. With my friends. Nice. Interesting. That's very good. Yes. And uh, what, uh, do you have any hobby or anything like that? Mm, I like read. Yes. And, and uh, I like cook. Oh, we have to try mm -hmm. that. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is your favorite book? Uh, oh, it's not, I don't remember the name. Not at all. Um, I I don't remember the name in this moment, teacher. Don't worry. And uh, what is the last book that you read? Um, 
da la quinta montaña de Paulo Coelho. Fifth mountain. I haven't read that one. What is that about? And uh, the book is about the, um, the history, the um, profeta, profeta? I teach, I don't remember the name that I. The, and the time, the, is of the time the, the Dios, the good? God. God, uh, God. Mm, okay, um, I haven't mm -hmm. read that one. I really liked a book from him that is uh, Veronica Decides to Die. That is a very good book. I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, sincerely, I read um, 20 page. Mm -hmm. I really and, not, not all the book. In, uh -huh. in, in the last day, the last, last day. Uh -huh. It's very difficult. Um, the time for the read the book is I need consent. <laughs> that is true. Um, yeah, sometimes we don't have time, right? Because of the English classes and the job and the kids and the family and we have to cook and well, but I hope mm -hmm. you have the time to continue reading. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Adrian. You're welcome, teacher. Okay, my friends, this is the end of the class. We don't have class tomorrow. And on Sunday, we don't have class as well. So remember that on Monday, yes, we have class. And remember to finish yeah. the section one, the section two, and the midterm test. Okay, so that is very important. Any questions before we finish? No questions. Very good. The 101 for today is for Sandra Romero. And we're going to check the attendance. Here we go. So let's go here. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Carmen Jasmine Lopez Martinez. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Jose Ernesto Osorio Morán. Carla Verónica. Present teacher. Good. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Ophelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Here, teacher. Good. Good. <laughs> Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good night. Present. Good night. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present. Good. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramirez. Here, teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramirez. Good. Good, night. Good night. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Present teacher. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good night. Good night. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present. Good night. Good night. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. 
Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very nice weekend. Rest very well. Enjoy, travel a lot, eat a lot, and dream in it. Bye. See okay. you. Okay, good night. Good night. See you, good See you Monday, buddy. Weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. 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 Hello, Wendy, can you hear me? Hello.